In this video we're going to look at compound interest. We'll start with this first example uh, where interest is compounded annually. So suppose that $10,000 is invested at 5% interest compounded annually. We're going to complete this table and then, oh, there's more values on this table here. And then we're going to find a function A for the amount in the account after T years. Okay, so let's have a look at this. If we invest $10,000 at 5% compounded annually, well, if T is years, okay, so put years up here, and A is amount, the amount that's in the account. Um, by the way, this $10,000 is called the principal. Because that's the amount that you first put in there. Yeah, so principal AL, this amount here. Okay. <clears throat> so after zero years, how much is in the account? Well, $10,000, right? Because that's what you start with. So at year zero, initially, this is when you put the money in. Okay. Now, after one year, can you calculate the amount in the account? It's going to be interest is compounded annually. Compounded means calculated and then added on to your amount. So compounded annually means they're going to get 5% interest and add it on to your account. Okay? So we're going to take uh, $10,000 that we have already in year one. Okay? And we're going to add. 5% of $10,000. Okay? That that's what year 1 will give us, right? So, um remember that uh, well, 5% can you turn first of all we need to turn that into a decimal. Can you do that? 5% is 5 per 100, 5 over 100. Five hundredths is like five cents, so it's zero point zero five, isn't it? Okay, so this becomes zero point zero five. Now, do you remember that of means multiply? So it's zero point zero five multiplied by ten thousand, right? Sorry. Oh, don't want to use that one. Where's my pen? Don't see it. Okay. So it's 0 0.05 multiplied by 10,000, and of course we have we start with 10,000. So we've got to go this plus this. Okay. Now, if you calculate that, go ahead and calculate that. See what you get. If you calculate that, of course, it'll be 10,000, right? Plus 0 0.05 times 10,000 is 5 times 100, 500. Okay. The two decimal places would take off two zeros here and then five times 100 is 500. Anyway, so that gives you that. In other words, the amount is 10,500. Okay? But if we wanted to, and, and here's, one, here's one way of writing it because it'll help us to come up with a formula later on. But we could, if, if you pull out, if you look at these two things as terms, and if you pull out 10,000 as a greatest common factor, greatest common factor, okay, you could rewrite this line as 10,000 times 1, the 10,000 times 1 would give this, plus 0 0.05, see that, 10,000 times 1, and then 10,000 times 0 0.05 would give this, which is the 500, okay. So, if we, so uh, the answer is 10,500, okay. But uh, I'd also like you to write down that that is the same thing as uh, 10,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05, or 0 0.05, which is uh, 1 um, uh, 0.05, I guess, right? Now, after year 2, let's calculate the amount in the account after year 2. Okay, we'll calculate this amount. So. In year two, um, the ten thousand five hundred has been invested at five percent. 
That 5% is compounded annually. It means it, you calculate the interest and add it to your amount each year. So at the end of year two, we have the 10,500 that we started with, plus, once again, 5% of the 10,500 again, right? Does that make sense? So we have the amount plus the interest. This is going to be the interest. So go ahead and calculate this and see what you get. Press pause and calculate this. Okay, hope you've, hope you've tried this. 10,500 plus 5% as a decimal. 5% equals 5 per 100 or 0 0.05. 5 hundredths. Okay. So we have 0 0.05. Of means multiply. Multiply by 10,500. Right? So if we calculate this, we get um, 10,500, right? Plus 0 0.05 times this. Did you get that? Because of the two decimal places here, we can take off these two zeros. Now 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times that is 500, so that becomes 525, right? And of course that amounts to 10,000, or sorry, 11, 11,025, right? Now if I pull a greatest common factor of 10,500 from here, I can do this. Write it as 10,500 times 1 plus this 0 0.05. Because watch, 10,500 times 1 gives 10,500. 500. Whoops. 10,500 times 0 0.05 gives 0 0.05 times 10,500, right? Which is what we have the, at, up here. So this is what this is, okay? So at the end of year two, we have 11,025 or 10,500 times um, times 1 plus 0 0.05 or in other words 1.05, okay? But the thing is, we know that this 10,500, okay, is the same thing as one th or as 10,000 times 1.05, right? Which means that we can rewrite this whole thing. We can take this 10,500 here and we can say that that is the same as 10,000 times 1.05, right? So this 10,500 gets replaced with this. But we still have another 1.05 to multiply by, okay? So in fact, we get that after two years, the amount in the account can be written as 10,000 times 1.05 all squared, right? See that? And you'll find that if you calculate for three years, it keeps going on and on. And after three years, you just take, you know, the, um, well, that for, for three years, you'll take your 11,025 and you'll multiply that by 1.05 to get an extra 5% interest. But of course, 11,025 we know is the same thing as 10,000 times 1.05 all squared. So this 11,025 see, is replaced by this, but we're multiplying it by another 1 point, sorry, 1.05, okay? So after three years, we have 
10,000 times 1.05 all cubed and the pattern continues and of course you can you know you can calculate that you can use your calculator 11,000 ti and 25 times 1.05 would give you the answer there so if you use a calculator or whatever uh, this becomes after three years of course you have 11,000 Five seven six twenty five. Okay. Out. Oh, whoops. And the pattern continues because after four years, you'll have ten thousand times one point zero five to the power of what? Take a guess. What what should the exponent be on this? After two years, it was ten thousand times one point zero five squared. After three years, ten thousand times one point zero five cubed. After four years, 10,000 times 1.05 to the power of four, right? And of course, you can calculate that in the calculator. You would first do the uh, exponents on that guy, I would suggest. Uh, you can write it out step by step, I suppose. So do, you know, I don't know what sort of calculator you have, but, but there should be a exponent uh, button on it somewhere and it often looks like this, it's a little hat so you want to do um, you know something like 1.05 to the power of 4 try that for fun, ok 1.05 to the power of 4 oh my goodness and then whatever answer you get for that multiply that by 10,000 oops ok so um I guess I guess this has given us um who one point two one five five zero six two five and when we multiply that out we get um one two one five five point zero six two five Okay, so we can just round this to, uh, of course, you can just round this to 12,155 and 6 cents. Okay, and of course, the pattern continues. If for 10 years we would um, take our $10,000 and multiply that by 1.05 to the power of what? How many times would the interest be compounded? How many times? in 10 years would the interest be calculated and then added back on again to the power of 10 right because there'd be 10 compoundings and you can calculate this in your calculator and again watch out for the um, watch out for the exponent um, this you've got to figure out on your calculator somehow 1.05 to the power of 10 and you probably have a little hat symbol somewhere to the power of 10 like that and get that number then multiply it by 10,000. It's always nice to calculate this big long number, leave it in your calculator you know and then multiply it by 10,000. So in any case um, in any case you might get uh, so in any case we've got okay 10,000 uh, times that so you might get one six two eight eight point nine four six two seven and then we've got to round it to the nearest cent so point nine four and after that becomes a six so we've got to round it up to point nine five don't we so one six two eight eight point nine five right so what would you get for after 20 years what would the amount be after 20 years you could calculate let's just we, we won't count would, would you be 10,000 times 1.05 to the power of what to the power of 20 right and after t years it would be 10,000 times 1.05 to the power of to the power of T, right? 
So I didn't calculate 20 years just to save time. But you know, you know what how to do it. So after t years, this is the answer. So this is equal to a of t. This is the amount after t years, right?